Welcome back to another painting session. Today I'll be teaching you all how to spray paint a planet using neon paints and making it glow very, very brightly, of course. So first, I put down the stencil. This could be a bowl, a lid, a flat stencil made out of the same paper you see over here. This will be our stencil for our planet, as you can imagine. And I'll be using some Rust-Oleum fluorescent neon paint, very bright orange. By using this to make an outline over. I also have a neon bar as a black light to activate the UV paint. These two things go hand in hand because you need both to help each other. So I'll have the bar over and you can see that it glows very very brightly along with the white underneath. All right. So first I will, well I'll shave the brown for later. I'll have some very dark oranges here. I'll say it now and I'll say it again for other videos as well. Always make layers. Always make layers for your planets as layers will help you tremendously in making a quality planet texture. Making it seem real and pop right before your eyes. You can do this by having darker colors on the bottom and lighter colors up top. To make there seem that there's layers or some ecosystem, some depth to your planet that just having one or a few colors stacked on top of each other simply will not do. Having a gradient like this, a darker orange up to the brighter, will allow you to have a planet and make a planet that is much more realistic in terms of lighting as well. Once I have all the oranges down, I will then proceed to deal with some yellows up top. These yellows and very light tans will also have a filter of neon on there. So only one layer will have neon, but as you will see later on, there is a point to this. If I have the clouds that I will make only neon, then it will be much more dynamic for the rest of the planet. It will make it pop a bit more. And because I will be using the neon paint as a filter, the yellow paint here will seem much more orange in the finished product. Now just keep back and forth, back and forth. When you have neon paint with this type of nozzle, you want to spend some time over it. Just spritzing it like normal will not do. You need a thicker amount of it. And also, to demonstrate to you all that layering is all you need, I will just take this normal newspaper and instead when I usually you know, fold it like this, very neatly and linearly, I'll just thump it up like this, like an absolute madman, and fold it over, then I will only use this as my texture. A complete, a folded mess will be turned into a bright and vibrant planet. Just you watch. So you lay it down, and then swipe in any position in which you prefer and then you lift up all right see it also helps the direction where you are waving it at because I waved it over there and not just dabbed it in I made a system of clouds rather than craters or maybe a little bit of both. Because you see, with the pressure I added, it even went through the second deepest layer to have a little bit of white in there. Not a lot, but enough to where it's a bit brighter orange, even beneath the orange over there. All right. So I'll test this with the neon black light to see if it really carried over. And yes, it did. Very, very vibrant and very full of color. Very good. 
Um, should I? Yeah, I'll add a tint to this. Kind of like that. I'll also have a filter neon. So it's just very bright orange, but it still has that tan to it. So now if I turn this back on, still bright. Nothing else changes except there's a little brightness to there. Have this over just to see where it would be. So I'll have the shading right over there. And this will be a color called Kona Brown. It is a reddish brown, but it leans more to the brown side. I know some more sodium cans now have this type of lid. Uh, I would rather have it than normal factory caps, but these also allow you to, uh, it makes it much easier to control your spray if you do not know how to with the normal factory caps, which is what these white things are. Uh, number one, well, it has five modes. It has high output, standard, low output, vertical fans, and horizontal fans. This would be considered a horizontal fan, or uh, sorry, a vertical fan, as it sprays out like this, so you sweep it like that. At the moment, I'm having it at the low output for, if anything, that's the only real reason why I get this in particular in the dark color as it is. So it's very easy to make shading like this. Of course, last but not least, I will have the gloss coat here for that extra little oomph. If, especially with uh, gloss over here, and if you're using satin colors, it helps to mellow them out. And if there's any, uh, well, you just see here. It helps for the shading to recess, uh, or recess a tiny bit, even if you see over here, especially kind of dimmed down over here and kind of went back. The, the shading is still there, but it makes the gradient much more easy on the eyes and much more fluid than it would be just for me doing it alone. The gloss coat helps to meld in with the colors even just a tiny bit, especially with paint that's already very recently has been laid down, like the shading, the tinting here helps quite a lot with that. So if you want something like that, but if, um, <clears throat> well, if you want something like this, then you would have their gloss coat. I highly recommend it. If you don't want it, if you want it to be much more harsher, uh, no gradient at all, no melding, uh, whatever I presented here, then don't use gloss, simple as that. The downside of gloss is because you have to wait for the paint to dry. As you can imagine, it's very wet because of it. So I have to wait much longer for the paint to dry. But in the meantime, I'll have some footage of some nice nature from around the area, some calming sounds to go with it for you all's enjoyment. And now we are back. So, once you think that the painting is dry, just to make sure you glide your hand across it, make sure that your fingers don't stick, and if they do not, then you place your stencil on in an orientation that you want the painting and the painting to look like. You put the stencils on, <clears throat> not stencils, I mean weights, pardon me. And I tell this to everyone, make sure that your weights are always light. If you use heavy weights, then you risk the chance that the stencil will stick to the paint. That is something you really do not want. That will make or break the painting. As if the stencil sticks to the paint, then that leads to peeling of that paint underneath the stencil then that leads to an unwanted texture 
that would look really, really bad in the finished product. Unless that is something you are actively looking for, I would highly advise that you do not do that. Always take preventative measures so you do not have to clean up after your own mess. So, once the stencil is all laid down and well, you will put down some dark paint. Always make sure that the paint in question, like I said, is very dark to contrast whatever the planet color is, which should be fairly bright to contrast with the space around it. Because as some of you might know, space is very, very dark, so be very, very realistic to make it so. To reflect the realism of rear space. Alright, he's going to have one good layer of this Kona Brown, the same color I used to shade the planet. Then I'm going to have a lot of this is lighter and this will be darker. I'm going to have this much darker than usual to highlight the neon paint. I'm going to have a bit more browns in here. And some oranges as well to highlight the color. Just a few spritzes of the lighter color should be good enough. And one more just to make sure. Alright, that should be good. Now it is time to put down the stars. Now to fit with the theme, these stars will be neon painted. To do this, I highly recommend a plastic or latex glove to protect your fingers when you're flicking the stars. Use a finger or pair of fingers that help you to flick better. Mine is my thumb and my middle finger. Some people use their index, their ring, maybe even your pinky. I use the middle finger as it is the strongest out of the four. Besides the thumb, of course. Spray down on that strongest finger, pre-flick. Usually I do this on a separate piece of cardboard, which I will do now. Um, only after I demonstrate it, of course. Spray there, flick, then flick on the painting. The pre-flicking allows for the elimination of any big paint globs that might accumulate on that glove. If you were to choose to not pre-flick, then it will most likely result in a very nasty looking star. That if the paint gets too heavy, probably won't look like a circle or a star at all. It will glob up too much and make an irregular shape. Once you are done with the stars, I mean, I'll add a few more. But once you are done, you grab the end of the glove and then push up. Just like that. Now I will add a few comets. I do this by making a comet creator piece of paper or just comet maker. It's just a name I put to it. What it is, it is a piece of cardstock paper just like the one as the canvas or the stencil cut into a little rectangle like this. Now to begin with this how the magic works is one side is hardly creased to make a sharp edge and this one is rounded to act as the net. Now this net is where you would spray your paint. When you spray here the paint has no other way to go freely either up or down. And that down motion is what we are focusing on. As if you could see, hopefully the camera is picking it up. Okay, there we go. Then you see this little triangle that I can contort like this, slimming it down and widening it like so. That little shape there is what the comet will look like, as that is where the paint will be going. So 
see, just like that. You could get closer to that shape to make the comment a bit more vibrant in color. And do please uh, don't mind the noise outside. There's just a truck moving in. Not mine, of course. <clears throat> so once you are done, move out the stencils. Not stencils, the uh, weights. I keep getting those mixed up. The weights off. Use the tips of your fingers so you don't have to touch them a lot because you do not want to clean spray paint off of your hands. All right, so once done, I will, um, no, I'll use the black point. I'll use the black light over here just to show the stars and comments, just in case I need to change anything. Um, the comments are a bit faint, but that's fine. The main attraction is what's being covered up right now. And this, of course, is the grand reveal, my favorite part. And I think yours as well. This will show the end of the painting. A make or break moment. There we go. Went off without a hitch. Last but not least, I will add the gloss paint. There we go. I uh, will put my signature, turn down the lights, and let you all see the glowing of what it really looks like. Signature right there. All nice and pretty. That's it. See you in the close ups. Okay, this is the close up as promised. I'll go over it now with the lights, show you all what it looks like very bright like this. And then I'll turn the light off and then show you all what it looks like under the black light so the UV and neon can truly shine brightly. So I'll turn off the light. Use the night bar and show you what it looks like. See, as you can very clearly see, the neon worked without a hitch. Now, I'll recommend the video or the tutorial I made last time, as that video will clearly see what it would look like if I did not just make the clouds here, as I made the entire planet full of neon. But as I said in that video, if you have watched that, then if you make just the clouds neon, then it makes it much more dynamic and much more, uh, it pops out to you a bit more. But if you could see over here, my uh, flicking of the stars was a bit uh, over <clears throat> overdone, but that's fine. Just decorating some of the cans here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. For the glowing, that is. I turn on the normal light for outros. Now, I hope that you all have enjoyed today's painting session and have learned something from little old me. If you have liked what I have done, if you like spray painting, uh, and especially how I do these things, then I do recommend that you subscribe to the channel. If you like this video in particular, please tell me if you did by commenting down below. Of course, you could also criticize the video. That is all well and good. And any compliments or criticisms both help me to become a better YouTuber or video maker, much rather, and a spray painter for my paintings. Of course, you could simply just like the video. Any way helps um, in the algorithm, of course, that's it shown to many more people to hopefully if they wish to learn something that you have as well. You could share the video as well to your friends if they are more interested in this as well. Um, put that out of the way, and we'll have final farewells until my next painting, that is. I don't know what particular that may be. I may teach you how to do clouds, arrange planets, overlay planets, galaxies, how to make the space look better. All of those things are a real possibility for the next tutorial I have in the roster. But until that video, whatever video and painting that may be, I hope to see you all there with me. And until that next video, I hope that everyone has a great day or night. Bye-bye.